So what we're doing here at uh, Houston, we're trying to generate uh, a microscopic instance of what could be classified as uh, a space warp. So just to kind of give a little background, the idea of a space warp works on the principle ex of expanding and contracting space in such a way uh, that allows you to go somewhere very, very quickly. Uh, when you talk about interstellar distances, it's very, very difficult to cross that distance in time periods that are not measured in centuries or millennia. So that's the idea that, uh, or that's the limitation that uh, drives us to think about the idea of a space warp. And so, and um, actually, go ahead. Sorry, John. No, I was just going to say, I mean, in Hollywood, just going back to Hollywood, you see the spacecraft and then it takes off. I mean, is that how it works, that an actual spacecraft would get going as a result of this? or? Yeah, so, you know, a, another analogy that I've provided folks, right, most folks have gone to an airport, and uh, an airport has those, uh, those rolling walkways that you can get onto that helps you cover the distance uh, quicker between gates, right? So as you're walking along and say somebody's next to you walking at a, a similar rate, uh, as you step onto the moving walkway, you'll appear to start moving faster relative to the other person that's not on the walkway. So in principle, that's like a, a terrestrial analogy for the idea of how it might, uh, uh, might appear. So it's very simplified, but just to try and help articulate the point of view. So in principle, a space warp would allow you to go to places like Alpha Centauri in time periods measured in weeks, uh, months, as opposed to decades or centuries or millennia. The first step, and I believe the reason you're working on this, is to pr prove it's possible. But everyone's going to wonder, when are we going to start using this? And to that you say what? Well, whether, yeah, so uh, what we're doing in the lab is very scientific, very controlled. It's, uh, we're simply trying to generate a very microscopic instance of this type of phenomenon to show that we've uh, properly interpreted the mathematics and uh, done something in a very controlled scientific manner. Uh, so, you know, nobody needs to quit their day jobs. You're not going to bolt this to a spacecraft. This is very much in, in the realm of, of a science pursuit. Uh, but it's, the, it's the, the right next step to take. We have to get kind of existence proof uh, that we've properly understood and applied the mathematics. You know, general relativity has made a lot of interesting predictions uh, over the years. So it's, uh, this is just one of those things where I think after uh, a good amount of due diligence, we'll eventually get there. But how long it takes to get the application, again, if it's two years, 20 yeah. years, or 200 years, I don't know. It, it, uh, I think based on the work I've done in the last uh, couple years to reduce the uh, energy requirements to something that's a little bit more tenable. Some of the previous uh, energy estimates were very, very large, and most scientists, myself included, were originally skeptical that you could potentially uh, ever manifest uh, uh, this idea. But uh, the work I've done the last couple of years has been really encouraging and gotten myself and a lot of other scientists uh, interested that um, maybe we've moved it from the realm of impractical into plausible. And so that's why you see some of this activity at this, activity at this point.